I don't think that I was wrong in having the dream that I had with the information that I had available. I never would have thought that a single piece of paper could stand between me and my dreams, and yet here we are. I'm Anne. Three years ago, my husband Adam and I packed up our whole lives and moved from Seattle to Nashville with dreams of opening a craft school where people could learn disappearing life skills. It was supposed to take six months, opening May of 2020. Here we are three years later, and if we don't get the permits that we need, we're dead in the water. In 2020, I released this video. It talked about the challenges that we'd faced so far in the build. Deadly tornadoes sweeping through one of those Super Tuesday states, Tennessee. The CDC all but promises that the coronavirus will spread here. And Since mid-April, lumber is up 170%. Like now with so many other people's dreams and livelihoods wrapped up in my dream, the weight of this all is just um, it's crushing me. Since then, I honestly didn't want to keep sharing this sob story about hiccup after hiccup and burden after burden that we face. I honestly didn't know how to talk about this project in the encouraging and hopeful way that I wanted to talk about it and share with the people that are viewing my channel. This channel is about the hope that comes from becoming more self-sufficient, gaining skills and gaining abilities like growing our own food and becoming less reliant on the things that we can't control so that we feel like we're in more control. The thing about that is, is that self-sufficiency, self-reliance, that's a recipe for burnout. Learning how to become self-sufficient in a way that helps you to engage and serve and become involved in the community around you, becoming vulnerable and asking for help is actually how we make big, seemingly impossible things happen. I am a very small person. I always have been. I was the youngest, the littlest. I have a bunch of learning disabilities that made it really hard for me in school and made me an easy target for getting pretty badly bullied when I was a kid. And I spent a lot of my young life trying to prove, not just to other people, but really to myself, that I was not stupid, that I was actually pretty smart, that I was capable of doing things myself, and that I had something valuable to contribute to the world. I realized pretty quickly after moving here that I had bitten off way more than I could chew. I have some huge dreams for this school and for this farm, and to try to do it myself is honestly pretty ridiculous. Also, trying to save money by not hiring a contractor and doing a lot of the work myself and then doing all of the coordination efforts was probably not the best choice. In fact, I actually think that it cost me more money. In addition to dividing my time and attention and focus, when things had gone totally sideways with this build and materials were literally rotting on the ground because we couldn't get a roof on it in time for winter, it was absolutely terrifying to admit to literally anyone that I, I hadn't thought of everything, that things were going wrong, that I didn't have everything figured out. Even though I've gotten a lot more confident in my skills and my abilities, it's still not ever gonna be easy for me to admit that things aren't going perfectly or that I even need help. I also don't wanna be a burden to people around me. But when things really stalled on this building project, I had a conversation with my dad that really changed my perspective about pretty much everything. And he said that if you are never open and honest about where you're failing or where you're lacking or what's even really going on behind the scenes, then you're robbing other people in your community to have the satisfaction of lending a hand and having the opportunity to shine in ways that you can't. Learning how to ask for help and becoming okay with having other people take the center stage was really the only way that any of this was actually going to happen. Admitting any kind of failure or imperfections is hard because it's shameful, but being vulnerable and allowing people into that shame gives them the opportunity to say the two most powerful words in the English language, which is me too. Had I not allowed myself to be publicly imperfect, even for a 10 minute video, I would not have been able to experience the absolutely astounding outpouring of support
not just for this school and this particular project, but for me and what I was trying to do here. The kindness and generosity that I saw, people offering to drop what they were doing to come and swing a hammer to help us build. The people that, that took their time and their money to take classes online from Josh and I so that we could buy more building materials and continue on with the project. The people that said, hey, I'd love to be there to help, but here's $100 towards buying a pack of insulation. What the heck would possess you to come <laughs> from New York to Nashville to help with this school? Well, it seems like I needed a hand, and uh, I would love to get this building moving along. I mean, I love building community in the maker community. I mean, we're all here to work together, so why not lend a hand when you can? Friends have showed up from literally all over the world to help make this dream a reality. We got a roof on it. We got all of the materials covered and protected from the elements so that things weren't just rotting on site. We got windows in the building. We got siding on the building. We were able to repurpose a lot of the materials that I originally purposed to create the board and batten look that is going to make the building really pop. When we started this project, it was supposed to take six to eight months to complete. It's now been two and a half years, plus plus. <laughs> and some laws have actually changed since we started the project. Unfortunately, those laws are not super in favor of us actually getting done in a timely manner. We're gonna take this thing one day at a time. But we're currently in a bit of a pickle. At the beginning of this year, I told my best friend she could have her wedding here at the end of the summer, thinking that that would be ample time to have the building finished. It's clearly not done. We have nine days to get this thing ready for her wedding. And I hope you stay tuned to see what happens.